People around laughed at the line from Rose, the wife of the eldest son, Mike. The unpleasant laughter echoed. This is my house, you know? At those moments you're like, huh? People who interpret certain information to suit themselves need to be careful. Because of that, some people end up ruining themselves. Just like Rose this time, I, Carrie Smith, just turned 60 this year. Though I'm old enough to be a grandmother, I run a small import wholesale business with my husband Tom, who's the same age as me. It's not a big company, but it makes a decent profit. Our only son Mike was once all set to take over the business, but one day he changed his mind. I want a career in design, Mom. I can't follow in your footsteps. We were a bit disappointed, but there was no reason for us to object. After we retire, we can hand the business over to another employee, or even close it with our generation. Seeing Mike's eyes shining, talking about his dreams, we wholeheartedly supported him. True to his words, Mike studied design and landed a job at a small to medium-sized design company. There, he met his colleague Rose, and they married this year, when he turned 30. Rose is 25, five years younger than Mike. With her well-done makeup and model-like slim, long limbs, she was a sight to behold. At their wedding, I was so taken by her beauty that I blurted out, Rose, you're so beautiful. You look like a model or an actress. To this, Rose smiled happily and replied, I get that a lot. You definitely have the grandmother vibe, Carrie. Oh, I mean, in a good way. Honestly, I was offended. Sure, I'm a grandmother, but did she really need to say it to my face? And that too, my son's wife to her mother-in-law. The whole mother-in-law and daughter-in-law conflict is complicated enough. Grandmother, huh? As a mother-in-law, showing any malice could easily be seen as harassing my son's wife, which I wanted to avoid. I want to avoid unnecessary conflict. Mother-in-law and daughter-in-law conflicts are already delicate enough. Just this time. Just this time. I told myself this to get through it, but after meeting Rose a few times post-marriage, I was convinced. Her seemingly innocuous comments were actually just mean-spirited. Rose always wanted to be on top. And as her mother-in-law, I was no exception. Every time we met, she tried to one-up me. I prefer using good things for a long time. It's partly to save money, but I also like how things become familiar over time. But to Rose, this just seemed miserly. Rose deliberately picked up my bag and clothes hanging on the wall, showing them off mockingly. Yes, I take good care of them, so they last a long time. Her voice and face laughing as if it was all fun were completely mocking me. I couldn't help but wonder why Mike married this girl. Internally fuming with anger, I tried to find something good about Rose. The conclusion I reached was that she only had her looks going for her, which made me doubt Mike's taste in women. Moreover, whenever we dined together, Rose always pushed the food I disliked onto my plate. When I reluctantly finished it all, Rose's eyes would widen with laughter. I was stunned. After making someone eat leftovers and then saying something like that. What a predicament. Eventually she even joked it's so convenient having Carrie around. I thought Mike was foolish for choosing such a wife. Initially, Mike seemed happy in the first couple of months of marriage, but within half a year, he looked drained. He started coming over to our house alone, once a week. It was as if he was seeking refuge from Rose. It was clear that things weren't going well between Mike and Rose. As proof, whenever Mike came to our house, he often complained, Rose wants to quit her job. She's already been skiving off a lot. I'm left dealing with all the complaints. Rose had originally wanted to quit working after getting married, but Mike was uneasy about relying on his income alone. I'd prefer if you continued working. Rose agreed, though it seemed she wasn't happy about it. Whether it was spite towards Mike or just a lack of motivation, it was unclear, but her neglect of work was evident. When mistakes were made, naturally the other employees had to take responsibility. When mistakes were made, naturally the other employees had to take responsibility, and the anger was directed at Mike. Now I'm labeled as the idiot who judged a book by its cover and got tricked by a pretty face. Great. Just great. Mike lamented every time he visited. Things are tough. But there's good news for you, Mike. That thing we talked about, it'll be ready in two weeks. Really? This was the reason Mike had been visiting our house so frequently lately. His only solace was something that would be ready in two weeks.
I was so excited, I even bragged about it to a friend over the phone. Though his married life seemed tough, seeing Mike laugh like that made me smile too. One day Tom and I were at the furniture store a little far away. As we browsed and exchanged opinions, a familiar voice echoed through the store. With a sinking feeling, I looked towards the voice and saw Rose yelling at a salesperson. I wanted to pretend I didn't know her, but the salesperson being yelled at by Rose looked so scared even from a distance. I couldn't ignore it. Tom and I decided to approach Rose. Apparently, she was in the middle of haggling with the salesperson, angry because the discount wasn't as much as she expected. They don't usually do discounts here. We can't cover it all, but we can contribute a little. With that, the salesperson was promptly released. Rose, anticipating us paying, was in an exceptionally good mood. Perhaps that's why? I wondered why Rose was talking about needing furniture soon. Mike and his wife's apartment should have already been fully furnished with furniture and appliances. Mostly purchased when they got married and not old by any means. So I decided to need... Noticing my puzzled look, Rose eagerly shared, We're actually building a new house soon. A new house? Unfortunately, I hadn't heard anything about this from Mike. Well, I did know that. Rose seemed to relish this revelation, smirking smugly. Oh, should I not have mentioned it? But it's weird he didn't tell you. Right? His own parents. It seemed Rose couldn't stop her insinuating smile, as if suggesting that Mike and I weren't close. There was a gleam in Rose's eyes. I planned to ask Mike about the new house, but forgot as a month went by. Mike may be busy, hadn't come to our house recently. He used to come over so often. Well, as long as he's healthy, that's what matters, Tom and I were saying. This, when Mike called a few days later, I took the opportunity to ask him ask about what Rose had said. Mike, are you building a new house? Huh? No, I'm not. But Rose seems so happy talking about it. The... Mike sounded puzzled, but said he'd investigate and hung up. I'll look into it. A few days later, while cleaning the house, Mike called again. I found everything. It's gonna be interesting. Let's go together. I'm coming to pick you up now. Interesting? I had no idea what he meant, but Tom had left early for errands, so I was free for the day. I went with Mike, as he suggested. We arrived in the residential area about 30 minutes from our house. This is... Stepping out of the car, I was captivated by the house in front of me. Come on, Mom. Mike beckoned me and we entered the house. There was a noisy crowd and chatter coming from the living room. Mike quietly opened the door connecting the living room and the hallway. Inside there were about 10 men and women, probably in their 30s. They stirred upon noticing us, then Rose appeared, cutting through the commotion. Rose approached me laughing. Rose seemed a bit tipsy, the smell of alcohol on her breath. Whispering in my ear, Mike said, Today they're having a housewarming party. Clearly she was eavesdropping. According to Mike, all the men and women in their 30s were his and Rose's colleagues. Rose, looking around with enjoyment, came closer to me again. The people around laughed at Rose's remark. The mocking laughter resonated. The laughter grew louder. Oh no, Rose told me, but Mike's mom is too needy. One of the colleagues said this and Rose replied, Right? Too much. Rose and her colleagues were of the same ilk, none of them calling her out. I don't really understand anything, but for now, not quite understanding, but determined. I raised my voice slightly more than usual and said, I do really understand anything, but... For now... Not quite understanding, but determined, I raised my voice slightly more than usual and said... I raised my voice slightly more than usual and said... This is my house, you know? The living room suddenly went silent. Rose and the others froze, while Mike alone had a mischievous smile. It's not like that, is this house I built it. Rose looked confused. Just then, Tom appeared at the living room door. What's going on? Why is it so quiet? Before I could explain, Rose shouted at Tom. Tom, slightly taken aback by Rose clinging to him, said, Well, this is Carrie's house. This unexpected response seemed to panic Rose. A surprise party for Carrie, right? No? Tom looked confused. At, at this point, Mike burst out laughing. Puss! It's all a misunderstanding by Rose. This is definitely Mom's house. Rose, grabbing Mike's clothes, stammered. Then it dawned on me. I opened the living room curtains, pointing to the corner of the yard. 
Rose, you're mistaken. This isn't Mike's dream castle or your new house. His dream castle is that. What I pointed to in the corner of the yard was a compact living space. A container house. Exactly. That's my dream castle. Mike nodded satisfied. Yes, what Mike was looking forward to was the compact living space, the container house. It's no lie. This is my house and yours. Rather, Mike's house is over there. I repeated calmly and Rose stood there shocked. Apparently Rose had misunderstood on her own. I was amazed at her audacity. She mistook Mike for building a new house and first probed Tom about it. Tom likely gave her the new house's location and keys without a second thought, assuming family trust. Then seeing the house she got carried away and hosted a housewarming party to show off, unaware of Mike's actual new build being a container house. All that bragging about a new house and it's that? Laughter leaked again from the crowd. Whispers and scoffing turned Rose's face bright red. Rose, didn't you say a man's house is a symbol? So Mike is like a container house kind of guy? Laughter leaked again from the crowd. Whispers and scoffing turned Rose's face bright red. I didn't trick you. You eavesdropped and misunderstood. Rose's face grew even redder, and she shouted loudly. To Rose it might be an old shack, but to me, it's heaven. After marrying Rose, Mike felt like he was always being watched. That's why the container house where no one would bother him was so attractive to him. Listening to Mike's explanation, Rose showed her anger. You don't have to, Rose. Mike said this and pulled out a paper from his bag, handing it to Rose. Her face drained of color upon seeing it. As you see, divorce papers. Mike sighed deeply and looked at Rose coldly. I knew about Rose's affair and that everyone laughed at me for being fooled by a pretty face. Unknown to me, Rose had been cheating since the beginning of their marriage, frequently returning home in the morning under the guise of work, though the overtime wasn't that much. Mike had found it strange. Then one night, coming back from work, he saw Rose arm in arm with a strange man. That's when he decided and hired a detective. The evidence came together easily. Quite a shock. Mike looked around the room. The murmuring voices ceased and the room fell eerily silent. If you're going to pretend you don't know, look at this too. Mike handed over a photo of Rose cozying up with her affair partner. Some tried to peek at Rose's hand out of curiosity, and she hurriedly hid it. If you're still not convinced, I have more explicit, direct evidence photos. The reason I kept quiet was just to gather evidence like this. I've got it all now. No way out for you. And I won't budge on the divorce or the compensation in the court. As she cried and clung to Mike, the crowd began to stir again, unable to hold back their laughter at Rose's downfall. Rose screamed in their hysteria, but it was just her way of venting stress. How pitiful. I wouldn't want to end up like that. I agree. I could never speak to my mamaya like that. Rose is just too out of touch. Value one, I agree. I could never speak to my mother-in-law like that. Rose is just too out of touch. As Rose knelt down and hung her head, her colleagues looked down on her. First they laughed along, but now they've quickly turned their backs on her. I didn't have much sympathy for Rose, but I did feel a bit sorry for her. Then, some people rushed over to Mike, patting him on the shoulder. Rose is cute, but cheating? That's a no-go. On to the next one. Everyone acted as if nothing had happened. Mike seemed to be responding with a smile, but there was no laughter in his eyes. How can you talk so casually? You're so thick-skinned. I admire it. Mike's provocative tone stiffened the face of a male colleague who had his hand on Mike's shoulder. Mike, what are you saying? Just take your heavy hand off me. As Mike brushed off the hand, the colleague raised his voice angrily. What the heck? I was just laughing. You're so petty. You're not even popular at work, and you're slow. No one defended Mike. They were all trying to calm the man down. Then Mike dropped another bombshell. Oh really? Well, don't worry. I'm quitting this month. What? I reacted the most. Why, Mike? I don't want to see Rose's face. I don't like this workplace that just gossips about others. I'm thinking of changing jobs. Mike had been looking for another job for a while, luckily impressed by his portfolio and track record. Surprisingly, it was the largest company in the industry. I may be changing jobs, but it's still the same industry. We might cross paths again as business partners, but if you guys are the representatives, 
I won't deal with you. Mike's gaze swept the room. He spoke as if lecturing each person. You should be more cautious about blindly following and joining in on uncertain information, whether it's true or not. A few who met Mike's eyes awkwardly looked away. I know you have been talking behind my back, calling me the guy who got cheated on. Mike clearly took the lead in the conversation. Some apologized sincerely, but Mike's stance didn't change. No matter how much you apologize, I won't forgive you. I can't trust you, and don't want to trouble my new company with strange people. Some looked as if it was the end of the world. The living room felt like a funeral. Some women, including Rose, sparkled their eyes. What? He got scouted by that company? So elite. But they quieted down under Mike's glare. This should have been a resolution, but it wasn't that simple. Even though it was newly built, by the time I arrived, there were a lot of other people relaxing there, as if it were someone else's home. Even though I finally built my own home after managing the money with Tom, just an apology couldn't settle this. I will have everyone compensate for the house cleaning. It needs a thorough cleaning. Honestly, I would want it rebuilt if I could. Surprisingly, no one objected to my angry declaration. Later, Mike and Rose ended up divorcing through their lawyers. Rose must have really hated the idea of divorce, or perhaps she was loath to lose her status as the wife of a man in a top company, because she persisted quite a bit. She even went so far as to say in an attempt to reconcile. But when Mike threatened to sue her if she continued to be persistent, she finally agreed to the divorce. However, Rose still tried to contact him after the divorce. Though not as desperate as before, her overly ingratiating voice on the phone exasperated Mike. Eventually, Mike bluntly told her, Why not make use of that flattering voice? You could earn a living day and night with it. You can do it. Cover your appearance with your voice. Aim for a lump sum payment in the divorce compensation. After that passionate speech, it seemed Rose finally stopped contacting him. As for me, I am now living with Mike and Tom, the three of us. Mike has completely fallen for his container house, and Tom is enjoying gardening. I am happy to have my own long-desired study. By the way, I reconfirmed with Mike if he really had no intention of taking over the company. He immediately answered no. Thankfully, the business is doing well, so Tom and I are planning to hand it over to a trusted employee. This decision motivated the employee even more, bringing various ideas to the table for the company. That's a happy development. The future of the company looks bright. Our new house got a bit dirty, but after a perfect house cleaning, we are planning to settle down and enjoy it slowly as our final residence.